Mmm, it look, it feels good. It looks good. It feels good. You, years ago, I used to sell cars. Brand new cars that like car dealerships. You know what they sell them at car dealerships? I used to sell cars. And they told us, this is how you sell a car. They said, just get the customer. They said, say, here, touch this. Here, fill this letter. Here, drive this car. They want you to take the test drive. They, and and they, this is what they said. They said, ain't it pretty? Don't you like it? Will you buy it? Ain't it pretty? Don't you like it? Will you buy it? They know if you get them wanting it, if you get them touching it, if you get them driving it, if you get them sitting in those nice, comfy seats, if you get them smelling that new car smell, they're going to want to buy it. The devil knows that too. He knows if he can, he can get you to put your hand to something, if he can get you to, to be around something enough, he knows he can pull you back down. That's right. Pit. Amen. The devil knows that. Yes. He's been practicing that a long time. He's been doing it for 6,000 years. Yes. Since Adam and Eve. And so he said, go ahead, touch it. Go ahead, feel it. Go ahead, look at it. And it looks good, the Bible says to them. And so they took of the fruit, they put their hand to it, and they did eat of the fruit. You know what happened? That day, they died. Yes. You know why? Because God's word is true. Amen. It doesn't matter what man's tradition says. It doesn't matter what even some religious leaders may tell you. If it's not in line with God's ways, then it's the wrong path. That's and right. it can lead you to destruction. Amen. Amen. There are those who are pulling others down to the pit because they're telling them, oh, it's okay. God doesn't really mean that. No, God means that. God's intention is good for us. God wants to keep us from being destroyed. My mother wanted to prevent me from getting burned by that paper, you know, by that plastic from that bag. She wanted to keep me from getting burned from that. But I thought I knew better than my mom. You see, when you're a kid, you think you know it all, right? We're kids, folks, in the eyes of God. And sometimes we think we know better than God. But we better get our, we better get our act together and realize that God knows it all. Yes, thank you. And his intentions for us are good and not bad. That's right. He wants to deliver us. He wants to set us free. He wants to make us whole. He wants to give us eternal life. Let's pay attention to what God says yes. and submit ourselves unto God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He said you've transgressed God's commandments. Verse 6. And honor not, and, and you do not honor his, his, your father or your mother. Thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect by your traditions. Thus you have made the commandment of God of none effect by your traditions. There's a philosophy in the church right now. It, uh, when I'm talking about the church, I'm, I'm talking about it's overall. You know what I'm talking about? There's a, there's a, there's a philosophy that says righteousness, when you come to Christ, you are righteous because God covers your sins and He sees you as righteous when you first come to Christ and then from then on God sees you as righteous. But holiness is where you do what's right. You do your know, godly things. You do what's right. That's holiness. That's, that's the conception that's out there. But the truth is true righteousness is not a covering of sin that we're living in. But true righteousness is a cleansing from sin and taking sin far away from us. Yes. That we live like he lived. Yes. And we do what's right. Yes. I was talking to a minister not too long back and I quoted 1 Peter 2.24 that says, Who his own self bear our sin in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, yes. by whose stripes we were healed. And I quoted that scripture to him and he said, you know, most ministers, he said, I hardly ever hear a minister quote that. They just quote the first part of it as far as to his own self bear our sin in his own body on the tree. And then they stop there. He bare our sin in his own body on the tree so we could be dead to sin yes. and live unto righteousness. 
So we can be dead to sin yes. and live under righteousness. You know what it means to live under righteousness? It means to live right. Yes. That's exactly what it means. So you can be dead to sin and live right. Amen. If you are in Christ, He bare your sin in His own body on the cross so the power of sin can be crucified in your life yes. and so you can live right. Thank you, Lord. So you didn't have to be a slave to sin anymore. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I heard this week that a, a national uh, denomination uh, put out a statement that said that they should just be receiving homosexuals into their minute as ministers into their ministry because now a whole bunch have already done this. But this is one that you wouldn't have thought would have done it. But but this national organization said that, that we ought to be just receiving homosexuals in the fold as ministers because they're just sinners like we are. Do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says you're not a sinner anymore if you're in Christ. That's right. The Bible says you're dead to sin. Dead to sin. The Bible says he buried your sin in his own body on the tree so you could be dead to sin and live under righteousness. Romans chapter 6 says, don't you know that when you are immersed into Christ Jesus, that you are immersed into his death? Yes. And then you are raised up together with him in newness of life. Yes. And he said, don't you know that your old man of sin now is dead and buried in the grave with Christ Jesus, and now you have the life of Jesus Christ himself in you. Yes. You're no longer spiritually dead, but you're alive unto God through Christ Jesus. Yes. So therefore reckon ye yourselves indeed to be dead unto sin, but alive unto God through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And so we, as children of God, we've got to understand that we need to, to walk with God. We need to quit walking like the world walks. If we're really a child of God, we want to hang out with godly people. Amen. I want to hang out with Christians. Birds of a feather what? Walk together, right? Yeah. I want to hang out with godly people. Man. I want to hang out with somebody that will build me up, not tear me down. I want to be around those who are going to help me get where I need to go. Hallelujah. And that is determined to be with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you. Glory to God. Amen. And so Jesus calls them hypocrites. Those religious leaders. He said, you hypocrites, you did. Well did Isaiah that prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Yes. Yeah. We need to have a heart for God, folks. Mm -hmm. And the only way we can do that is thinking on the things of God, and keeping our minds set upon godly things. Because ungodly things will pull us off track. And whatever we spend a lot of time watching or a lot of time listening to, it can get us pulled off track. That's There's right. some worldly music that no Christian should be listening to. That's right. I heard somebody say no music, bad music. That is not true. There is music that, that is inspired by Satan himself. That has demonic spirits that are going forth with that music. That try to pull people into all kinds Man. of perversion and ungodliness and unrighteousness. I mean, it's a scary thing, some of the music that's out there. All right? Be careful what you listen to. When we teach the kids, be careful, little, little ears, what you hear. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little mouth, what you say. The truth is, what you hear and what you, what you see, it'll have a big effect on what you say. That's right. And what you do. Absolutely. Here Jesus said, draw nigh unto me. They draw nigh unto me with their mouth and their lips and their hearts far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for the doctrines, the commandments of men instead of God. And he called the multitude and said to them, hear and understand. He said, I want you to understand this. It's not that which goeth into the mouth that defiles a man. He said, you eat and there's some dirt on your hand. And you're putting, you're putting that in your mouth. That's not what's going to defile you. He says, not what goes into a mouth that defiles a man, but that which cometh.